Hi friends, my name is Amber and this is a Lovely Yarn Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today is March 13th, it is Wednesday, and I am really excited to be here filming another podcast for you. I think I said this last time, but I'm pretty certain this one's going to be shorter because I don't feel like I have a lot to show, although I do have an, um, a new cast on that I'm just loving and it's going to be a quick knit. Uh, I really wanted to share that with you as well as update you on my Felix pullover and then I have a couple of pairs of socks and then I have some other crafty things that I want to talk about. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, oh, and if you want to see me on other places on the internet, mostly just Instagram, which I actually have not been very busy there. <laughs> actually, I haven't been active there at all lately. Um, but that is down below. There's also a link for my Goodreads account. I love to follow uh, everyone and see what everyone's reading. And actually, I'm going to have a book recommendation at the end of the podcast. So if you're into that, stick around for that. And um, I also have a link to my coffee account. So if you would like to make a financial donation to the channel, that's always greatly appreciated. And I want to thank all of my um everyone that has donated uh, over the month, the past month since I've set that up. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me. And I think that's all as far as links. Although also everything I talk about will be down in, in the description box below. And that's just how it is with every episode. So let's go ahead and get started. First, I should tell you what I'm wearing. This is my Anchor's Anchor Summer Shirt. I had to get it right because there's multiple anchors. <laughs> this is a pattern by Petite Knit. I made this last year at some point, either spring or summer. I can't remember when. And I knit this in the Drops Bell color 21, which is called Almond Rose. And it's this really pretty dusty pink color. Let me see if I can show you a little bit closer how this fits. So it hits like my natural waistline is right here so it hits me a little bit below that and I uh, if you have been a viewer of my podcast for any length of well since last year since last like spring summer you'll know that I really like knitting summer shirts in the drops bell yarn and I have knit multiple summer shirts in that yarn and I still recommend it and I'm actually looking forward to purchasing some more and doing some more summer shirts this year because I like it so much. It's nice and cool. It's not like, I mean, I don't know. Could I wear this on a 90 some degree day that's really humid? Probably not, but I would probably be wearing like a cami or something that was sleeveless on that kind of a day. But it's 60 some degrees out today, which guys, I live in Western Pennsylvania. So March 13th, that's really weird for us to have this warm weather, but we have an early spring here this year. I'll talk about that more later. But anyway, this is like perfect. This is perfect. Uh, and I think even in the 70s, I would be good wearing this. So yes, that is what I'm wearing. And then I'm going to jump in. I have one finished object and it is a pair of socks. These are the socks that I was showing you guys last week. Not last week, last episode. These are the socks that I made for someone in exchange for an instant pot. <laughs> so we did a little bartering. I also um, gave them a loaf of sourdough bread and I'm giving them a bottle of homemade vanilla extract, but they gave me their instant pot that they no longer used. And this yarn is an opal yarn. I will put the details of it down below. I don't know if it's still available in the shop that I purchased it from, but I will put that shop down there as well. I've linked to that shop many times because if you're in the United States, it's um, free shipping for your purchases, no minimum amount. And um, also they, she's the shop owner is super quick at getting stuff shipped out. So yeah, I, I've ordered a lot of yarn off of that shop. So I will link that down below as well. But these I made to fit like a size US 9 woman's foot, so they are a little bit bigger than what I would normally make for myself. But I just love this yarn, and it is very, it's um, kind of Eastery, isn't it? Those pastels, neutral pastels. Yeah, really love these. Have a little bit left, so I could probably make a pair of shorties, and I might do that eventually. But for now, I'm going to move on from this yarn. Um, because, you know, I've, I was working on these for several weeks, so I'm, I want to move on to something different. But 
that is my only finished object. Now let's talk about um, my new project that I recently cast it on. And I talked about this one in my last episode. And these are the winglet mitts by Satchiko Bergen. I have one done except, well, I need to weave in the ends and I need to go back and pick up for the thumb. But let me show you these, they're so cute. Okay, so do you see the little moth on there? Is that not just completely adorable? So let me put it on. And that is just done with, um, like a, it's a lace motif and you do some yarn overs, knit two together, slip, slip, slip knits. It's really easy. It's not a hard, it's not hard to do that. And this portion of the pattern is charted. So you need to be able to read charts, but charts are not hard to read. So don't be intimidated by chart reading. I know that some people are intimidated by it. I was at first, but I actually prefer charts over written instructions. I find them much easier to follow because you're just looking at picture, like a, a chart with little symbols in it rather than a bunch of words. So um, I knit these. So I've got that. Well, let, let me finish here what I'm telling you. So I got this one and then I've got this much of the left hand glove and I just have like, I don't know, four rows of the moth lace work started on this one. Now I did make a mistake and I didn't catch it till I was knitting the second mitt. But after you do this ribbing, which I think the mistake, I think it turned out okay because I ended up knitting my ribbing longer than what the pattern had called for. But after this ribbing, you were supposed to do multiple rows of just knit. And I somehow missed that entire line of instruction. And I went right into like the thumb gusset. <laughs> now they fit me and I like how they feel on me, but I think it's because I did about, I think I did either a half an inch or an inch more on the ribbing than the pattern called for. I still need to go back and pick up the thumb stitches and finish out my thumb. Uh, but I think these are so adorable. I knit them in Knit Picks palette, and this particular color is called Serpentine. So it's like a goldish, greenish, yellow color. I feel like that's pretty accurate what you're seeing on the screen. But I just think that little, look at that little moth motif. It is so adorable. And again, these have not been blocked yet either. So, um, I'm sure it'll look even like smoother once I block them. This is a very easy pattern in my opinion. Um, I don't like, I feel like if you were a beginner chart reader that you could do this without a problem. Um, I don't think there would be any problem with that. So if you guys are looking, if you like these, but you're like, Oh, but I don't know how to knit from a chart. I think you'd be okay to, to go for it. You know, um, just remember when you're knitting on a chart and you're knitting in the round, you're always knitting from right to left. So you always go back to the right and you go, you're always reading right to left. If you're knitting flat from a chart, you're back and forth, right, left, right. Okay. So I know, <laughs> I know that sometimes that can be confusing, but that's how it is when you're knitting in the round. So yes, yeah, super cute. Love this project. It was a paid for pattern, but I do not regret that. I, I mean, I never, I hardly ever, I've hardly ever regretted buying patterns. There are, there have been, there's one I can think of that I, no, there's two I can think of that I was like, I wish I wouldn't have bought this pattern. I don't think it's, it's a, they're well-written patterns, like they're confusing or, you know, but this is definitely one of those patterns that I'm really glad that I purchased because it's so pretty and it's so easy to make that little moth motif. Plus these are a quick knit. I believe I did this one mitt in three days. Now I don't knit all day long. I don't have time to sit there and knit all day long, but I feel like three days is a pretty like decent amount of time. And then I just, I haven't been working on them. So it's, we're kind of stagnant right now, but I think that this would be really good to give us gifts to because it is, um, 
and it's oh it uses fingering weight yarn so knit picks puts this palette yarn which is fingering weight they put this on sale often and i talked about in my last podcast episode i have a whole basket of palette yarn that i had gotten when they did a sale and i was getting it for like a dollar eighty two thirty so like all under three dollars a skein and it has 231 yards per skein it's a hundred percent Peruvian Highland wool. The pattern calls for like 200 yards of fingering weight yarn, but as you can see, I have a lot left over. So I'm going to be able to get at least two pairs. And I did knit the adult medium. It's knit on size. So the, the cuff is knit on a US zero. And then the, the, like the hand portion is knit on US one. So I did do that. I followed the needle measurements. Um, so yeah, I think get yourself some pellet yarn or use what you have. I like the pellet for this because it's also kind of sticky. So I think that helps give you the nice details on the moth. But yeah, okay. I think I've talked about that enough. So let's put that one away. And I want to show, give you guys a little update on my Felix pullover because I had started it, um, right before my last podcast episode uh, because I was craving something uh, like a comfort knit and the Felix pullover is definitely one of those comfort knits for me because I've knit multiples of them. So let me show you how far I've come. Okay. So I'm at the ribbing. So I have all this, the body done. I'm probably going to do double of what you already see for the ribbing. I tried this on last night and I want it to hit me at like mid hip and it is, it's very, it's like a, a loose, cozy, comfy sweatshirt sweater is what it is turning out to be. So I'm knitting this using Knit Picks Heatherly Worsted Weight, and this is in the Teddy Bear colorway. This is a non-super wash. It's, it's not super wash. It's funny though, because it's 80% acrylic, 20% wool but it says to hand wash. So I'm curious to see how this is going to turn out when I block it. I usually, if you're working with super wash, you can expect a lot of stretch. And I always kind of think about that when I'm knitting and maybe I won't knit the garment as long as I want it because I know it will stretch because it's super wash. But with this being acrylic and, um, the non super wash, and then also I'm holding it with this yarn. Which, let me grab this skein because this one's almost out. This is Make It Tweed, and it has absolutely no give at all. It is like thread. Okay, so it's it's going to hold its structure very well in this. So I'm not sure how this is going to block out. I'm not expecting it to grow a lot, but we'll see. That's just that's just my theory. <laughs> taking into consideration the type of yarn and all of that. But, um, what was I going to say? Oh, I want to special thank you to Laura of back porch fiber co for these. She sent me, so I did a swap with her at like an advent swap with her and Annie of knits and burls over Christmas time. And she sent me a container full of, I think she knew I needed them what are these called? Like needle stoppers or something. And they are so handy because normally I, so I would just like pull this back and hope for the best and shove it in the project bag. But it's so nice having these on because like my stitches are not coming off there. <laughs> so thank you, Laura. If you're watching this, I appreciate that. I also appreciate, she also sent me this stuff, this, I don't know what I've heard it called. Barber, bar, barber, Barber, what do they call this? Cording, like tried on tubing. I've had some of this, but the stuff that I have was really rigid and stiff. And I always had a hard time working with it, like manipulating the stitches over it. But Laura also sent me this, a container of this. And oh my gosh, it's amazing. It's because it, I think it's because it's so flexible and it really sticks well to the needle tips. Uh, I know what happened with my old cording like this was I would be pulling the stitches over onto the cording so I could try on my sweater and the cording would pop off of the stitch end and then I would lose stitches. I have not had that happen with this yet. So, and it just seems to stick better to the stitch, the metal stitches. 
Okay, so back to this. I don't really have a lot to say. I knitted the second size, I think. Hold on, let me look because I did write that down. Um, oh, no, I, I didn't write that down. <laughs> I think I knit the second size. I'm pretty sure I knit the second size. And it's turning out bigger than I thought. I knit it on a size 9 needle. And somebody, one of you had asked why I didn't knit with the size 10 needle when I had mentioned this in last the last podcast episode. And I have, I think I've knit almost every Felix pullover on a size 9 needle because I like the gauge that I get better. The 10's just a bit too open and loose for me. Uh, I tried an eight one time and it was a bit too tight and dense. And so I just like see this as nice and drapey, but it's still, it's not see-through. Okay. Cause I don't like when I can't, I don't, I don't really particularly like having to wear shirts under other shirts when I'm just at home because that tends to make me feel just too warm and uncomfortable. So I prefer to just be able to wear my sweater without anything underneath it. Uh, what else? Anything else? So yeah, I'm going to finish that up hopefully in the next couple of days and do the sleeves. I'm going to do long sleeves. I want to do long sleeves. I think I'm going to do just, I don't think I'm going to decrease at all. Maybe I'll decrease a little bit, but just very minimal. And then I'm going to do like a puff sleeve at the bottom, like a balloon sleeve. I'm going to decrease quickly and then do the ribbing. But here, let me show you guys this fabric that I'm getting with the Make a Tweed. And after I posted my episode last week, I had several of you say that you went and bought some Make It Tweed. So I am curious to know what you're gonna do, what, how you're gonna use it. It's really fun to be able to change. I'm probably honestly gonna end up ordering more and you, holding it double with my plain gray yarn that I have because I gray is fine, but it's really boring for me to work with. And I honestly don't even wear a lot of gray. But I think it would be really fun to add this to the gray and have that nice pop of Tweety color. Okay, I think that's all for this. So moving on. All right, next up we have a pair of birthday socks for my husband. I don't think he will be watching this. <laughs> Hopefully not. If you're watching this, Brad, happy early birthday. It's birthday's not until April 26th, but I'm trying to stay on top of gift knitting this year. And um, also I, <laughs> I'm cheating a bit on this one because I had started these last fall and stuck them on my shelf and totally forgot that I had started them until I was looking through my whips the other day. And I was like, oh gosh, I never finished those. So I just need to cast off this toe and, um, what is this yarn? This is an opal yarn. I, yarn. I really like opal yarn. I say this all the time. So there's the tag. Here is the other details. I am lucky in the, in the department of my husband's feet are only like a size, he wears like a size nine and a half in US men's, which is not a big size. So when I knit him socks, it's not extremely painful. I know some women who are knitting for their husbands and they have like size 11 or 12 feet. That's a big sock. <laughs> I don't have that. And, and, um, Ian also, my son, Ian, he has the same size feet as Brad. So when I've knit them socks, they don't take a real long time. So I have this one done to, I just need to close the, the toe on that. And then I have the second one and I am zipping along right on time with these. So I do not anticipate it being a problem having these done for his birthday at the end of April. Yeah. Okay. And funny enough, that is all the actual knitting projects that I have to show you. Um, I've just been, I don't know. I haven't, I, it's been weird. Do you, like you hear about people talking about them knitting or losing their knitting mojo or whatever. It's not that I've, it's not that I've done that. It's just that I've had so many things on my mind lately that my knitting is usually only usual. I used to knit in the morning and in the evening, but I've noticed lately that 
I've only been knitting in the evening and it's only been for like an hour, which maybe that's a lot for some people, but it's, I don't know. And I don't want to cast on a ton of things because I want to finish up what I already have on. I don't, I, I am not the type of person that can have a ton of projects going on at one time. That stresses me out. I have my, what's that sweater called by the petite knitter? I showed you guys the yarn for it. It's Pearl Soho yarn. Oh my goodness. I think it starts with an Sonder. The Sonder sweater. I had, I had talked about this two podcast episodes ago. I even wound up all the yarn for it, stuck it all in a project bag. I haven't cast that on yet because then I casted this on because I needed a, a comfort knit that I was familiar with. And so now I want to finish this. So when I finish this, I'm going to start the Sonder sweater. So that's that plan. And, um, I also have been just wanting, I think it's because it's spring but I've been wanting to just like kind of branch out a little bit and do some other crafting things. Like I always seem to watercolor paint more in the spring. So I've been thinking, I've had some ideas for that. And then I have some embroidery kits that I want to show, show you as well that I'm going to, I think I'm going to do one of those. So yeah, I don't know. I'm also thinking about my garden now and you know, I need to get some seeds ordered. I need to go through the seeds I saved to see what I really need to order so that I don't order things I don't need. Yeah, I just been, it's just, it's just been kind of like my brain's been all over the place. And then, you know, with the stuff I've told you guys about the um, health issues I've been having. So it's just, I'm kind of just knitting when I find the time and when I feel like it. I've also been doing a lot more reading of actual books rather than audiobooks. And so when I read an actual book, I'm not typically knitting um, because I like to just sit there and just focus on my reading and hold the book. So what I want to do for the remainder of this podcast episode is just talk about a couple of things that I'm enjoying right now. Um, a, po a podcast that I recently found that I'm enjoying. Yeah, just do some of that random stuff. So maybe this is a little bit different than a normal knitting episode because it's not going to be as heavy on the knitting projects, but I still wanted to get on and talk to you guys. I considered waiting another week until I had more knitting stuff to show you. And then I thought, no, I'm just going to do it. And if, you know, if you don't want to listen to the chatty stuff, that's perfectly fine. You know, that's why I'm putting it at the end here. So it has been absolutely gorgeous out. Well, okay, we had a lot, we had snow over the weekend, but if you take out the two like cold snowy days that we've had, we have been having spring-like weather. In fact, the trees are budding, the maples, the like <laughs> the pollen levels are up in the air, as my daughter can attest to. Her allergies have been a little bit haywire, and my daffodils are up, the crocus are up. What else is going on? All the birds are back. My, my oldest son, Sergei, saw a snake yesterday, which is, you know, I mean, s snakes around here don't typically come out in the beginning of March. Um, it's just been, it's been beautiful out. And it's, that's been, that's been nice. <laughs> because if you know me, you know I like the sun and you know that I prefer like spring and summer over fall and winter. So, um, yeah, I was going to try to knit while I talk, but I don't know that I can because when I'm knitting this sweater, I'm, you know, I'm holding these two strands double and it's really easy, especially in the ribbing section to not grab both strands. So maybe I'm just going to sit here and look at the camera and talk to you guys, but I, it's been nice. I've been getting a lot of outdoors time. Uh, I'm doing the 1000 hours challenge and I'm, I've already exceeded the hours that I had for each month last year. I kept that. I'm keeping track, you know, it's kind of like a motivator. So yeah. I've really enjoyed the weather. Um, I've recently found a knitting podcast that I wanted to share and I've disclaimer, I've only watched a couple of episodes, but the episodes I watched, I was like hooked and I'm like, I, you know how you just connect with some podcasters sometimes and you just know, <laughs> this is how I felt about this podcast. It is called pearls before time, time spelled like the herb and the podcast host her name is Elise. I'm not sure where she lives, but um, I'm she lives somewhere in the Northern Hemisphere, I'm pretty sure. At first I thought she was from like Australia or New Zealand because of her accent, but I'm, I'm not real good on accents. But then she started talking about how it's getting to be like spring. So 
she's not in Australia or New Zealand because they're going to be going into their fall. Um, yeah, so I'm not quite sure where she's from, but she's just like, you know, you sometimes watch a podcast and you just feel at home. That's how I felt watching her. <laughs> she was just so soothing. I love that. She was such just a soothing voice. Um, her projects were beautiful. I went and followed her on Instagram. I liked her Instagram post. They, she had lots of pretty things there. So if you guys want to check out a new podcast, at least new to me, she's not a big podcast. She doesn't have like, she, I don't know how long she's been doing it, but, um, I highly suggest going and checking out Elise at Pearls Before Time. So I've really enjoyed, I, if I had the time, I would probably be binge watching her episodes. Um, another thing that I wanted to share, I want to show you what I'm currently reading. So one of the things I often find myself doing this time of year are reading gardening books. Now this is not a gardening book per se, but it is a book that is very inspirational to me because it's called, well, it's called Beatrix Potter's Gardening Life, the plants and places that inspired the classic Charles children's tales. Marta McDowell is the author and I've had this book for three years and I started it last spring. I started to read it and then I got busy and put it down, but I restarted it last week and I've no over the weekend. I restarted it over the weekend and I'm like on page 73, but it talks about Beatrix Potter, Potter's life and then it has her artwork in it as well. It talks about how she was inspired by the various gardens that she grew up around. Uh, let me see if there's anything like it has. So it has a mixture of her paintings as well as real photographs from her life. And I'm just finding it very interesting and I, it's inspiring to me because I'm a gardener and I love to garden and my garden inspires me. And I also love to watercolor paint. So looking at her paintings and her sketches are just, just very soothing to my soul and just bring me a lot of joy. And I haven't got, I have not gotten extremely far into it because like I said, I'm only on page 73, but I'm really enjoying it. So that is just, um, a recommendation of a book that I am enjoying that you may also enjoy if you liked Beatrix Potter or like Beatrix Potter and you like gardening and her artwork. So she was very inspired by nature, which I am as well. So I relate. I just loved her books when my kids were growing up. I hope I still have all those, all those. I had like multiple books from her. Okay. So that is the book that I'm enjoying. I mean, I'm reading out lots of other books too, because unlike my knitting, I, I tend to read a ton of books at one time. And that is because I just want to read when I'm in the mood to read. And so I read fictional books. I read nonfiction books. I read like more resource books. Um, but that is the book that I'm actively reading. Okay. And then I, I had said that I felt like doing some embroidery. So I want to show you what I have. I actually have a couple of kits that I had purchased. Uh, well, it's been a while since I've purchased these. Now this first one, um, I don't know. So I'm not sure which one I want to cast on. This is a complete kit. So everything I need to embroider is right in this kit, which is nice and appealing because I don't have to gather anything. And this is a kit by the Urban Acres. You can see it comes with everything you need. And I kind of liked the bird on there for spring since the birds are back. But then at the same time, it almost looks very holiday-ish. Like I would maybe want to knit this more around Christmas time. I think that's because of the greens and, and the deep reds. So, but there's that one. And then I have, I purchased multiple embroidery. They're not kits, but they're the um, pattern off of Clementine Pattern Company. Let me show you. Okay, this is their little, what's that called? Logo. I don't know if they're still making, I'll link them below if they are, but, um, yeah, I've purchased, I purchased multiple kits off of them, not kits, 
Let me show you what I have and then, then it'll make sense. Let me get it out. Okay, so it's like the pattern. It's printed on to the fabric and you use your own embroidery floss and you pick your own colors. And then, although I think that they give suggestions. I think they give suggestions, let me see. Yes, they do give suggestions on colors, but you can do whatever you want. But like this one says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. So there's that one. I'm sorry, it's hard to see, but I, these will be easier. They had a big sale at some point. Here's another one. Again, the same, just the fabric printed. This is a nice one for summer. I want to do this one in the summer. I think I actually want to do this one. A joyful heart is good medicine. And then that's another. So this is a Christian company. It's a small business. It's a, when they originally started, it was, um, a mother and two daughters. The one daughter is an artist. She goes by Breezy Tulip. I follow her on Instagram. So you may, she's like, I think she does, uh, book illustrations for children's books as well as some other things. But yeah, I have those. I'm probably going to, I'm probably going to just do one of these. I think I might do the joyful heart one and, um, save the bird one for like, you know, later because it's just giving me more Christmassy vibes. And I think it's the colors. <laughs> I think it's the colors of it. I think that's what it is. Yeah, do you guys ever do that, like purchase stuff thinking you, well, you have really good intentions. And these were, I forget how much I got them for, but they were a really good deal. So I bought a bunch of them and I haven't done a single one yet. Actually, I think I have, hold on. I think I have one that I started from Clementine. Oh, I do. I do. I hardly look, you can't even say I started it. So I have this give thanks one. I must've started this. I don't know, a couple of falls ago. This is all the furthest farther I got. I put it in its hoop and I have my yarns. I have my yarn or my, not my yarn, my embroidery flosses picked out for the ones I want to use. So yeah, as you can see, good intentions don't always mean action. But I have been itching to do some embroidery. And I'm not a good embroiderer. I'm, I'm very, I've only done very minimal embroidery. Like I've done this little thing here, which this is just a little, some flowers that I just did quickly. I've done just very minimal embroidery. So I have this little book to help me along for the different stitches. And then of course I have YouTube as well. So yes, that is the plan. We will see because again, you know, there's only so much time in the day to get everything done. So I think that's it for today. I am going to wrap this up and thank you guys for watching. Oh, for those of you who are following along on my little thing with my heart issue, uh, you guys are awesome. First of all, you're all awesome. Thank you for all of your well wishes, prayers, like all of your positivity that you have been sending to me in the comment section. That means so much. I have read the comments. I have not responded because I, the, the mental bandwidth has not been there. This year has been tough for our family. Like <laughs> it all started back in Thanksgiving when I got sick and then I wasn't, I didn't get better until mid January. And then I literally found out about this heart thing then or begin that was in the beginning of January I found about that and I've just been processing everything so I'm not responding to comments like I used to but I'm reading them but I'm probably not going to respond and I apologize for that it's I, I hate not acknowledging when you guys take the time to leave me messages but um it's just I have to do that right now because you know there are times where I'm struggling a bit <laughs> um I do go this next week next Monday for to have a monitor implanted to monitor my heart rhythm. Um, and that will be, I'll probably have that for four years. They usually, they just stay in until the batteries go bad. So the plan is to have that about four years and that way they can just monitor and see what's going on, like on, get more data over an extended period of time. Um, the, yeah, so a little nervous about that. If I'm going to be honest, I'm a little nervous because you guys know I'm not crazy about doctors or hospitals, but this has definitely been something that this has been exposure therapy for me. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, 
I, but I appreciate your comments. Uh, they really do. Like they, you guys have been so positive and you've just built me up and it's made me feel so good because I have the tendency to run away with like imaginations in my head of bad things. <laughs> okay. So you guys, your comments and prayers and stuff have all kind of been like refocusing and recentering for me. So I appreciate it. Okay. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to end right there. And thank you so much for watching. And hopefully I will be back in, in two weeks with some more good knitting stuff and maybe some embroidery. Thank you so much, friends. I really care and love you all. And I appreciate you all. So have a wonderful day. Thank you.